I firmly believe that one of the keys to thriving as a creative human being is refusing to wait for elusive opportunities to come knocking. Instead, boldly forge your path. Fashion your own opportunities because as a creative individual, your fulfillment comes from the act of creation itself. Hey, I'm Lara, an artist, educator and entrepreneur who's danced through life in Australia, London and California. Now I'm an Aussie in Atlanta, Georgia, USA, juggling roles as an artist, ex-dancer, current actor, author, professional educator and qualified life coach. I'm also a wife and mother of two. Join me on this podcast crafted for creative souls at every level, entrepreneurs, artists, dreamers and hope-filled humans alike. I'm here to guide you towards a life of love, purpose, adventure, and boundless creativity. As a healthy, wealthy, and wise creative soul, I invite you to hit subscribe for weekly inspiration. Anticipate solo episodes, exclusive interviews with creative luminaries, and insightful discussions with my hottie hubby, Andrew, a specialist performance physical therapist, as we delve into the dynamics of relationships and more. Dive into a 360 degree view of making a creative life you'll love. This episode's really dear to my heart and a lot of my creative friends, especially with what's been going on in the world, not only in the acting industry, but in many creative industries. Uh, There's been a real season of lack and it's created an atmosphere of scarcity in so many creatives, creative entrepreneurs, artists. So this episode's breaking the chains of creative scarcity because it's a guide to getting you as an artist, as a creative entrepreneur, as a dreamer to flourish once again, reclaiming your creativity and strategies to overcome creative scarcity because let's face it, it's not a nice way to live. (laughs) Friends, do not let any form of creative scarcity into your life. I'm going to give you a breakdown of exactly what it is. But to start with, as an artist and creative entrepreneur, life for me is a continuous journey of creation, whether I'm collaborating on someone else's project or I'm crafting my own. The creative process never ceases because I firmly believe in seizing control of your artistic destiny, your creative future, actively propelling your career forward by opening new doors and steering your own path. One key that I'll give you to thriving long-term as a creative is refusing to wait for those elusive opportunities to come knocking on your door. Instead, it's about boldly forging your path, fashioning your opportunities, because as a creative individual, true fulfillment comes from the very act of creation itself. And embracing this mindset will empower you to cultivate your own success and find happiness by bringing your own creative visions to life. So whether I'm working on someone else's creative project or I'm doing my own, I never stop creating. And nor should you if you are an artist, a creative, a creative entrepreneur either. But what is creative scarcity? Because so many people have seasons of feeling this way. So let me break it down for you, friends. Creative scarcity is the fear of what you don't have and the worry that there isn't enough to go around. It's this anxiety inducing mindset that whispers doubts about whether you'll ever achieve what you desire. It's this nagging feeling that you're not enough and that there will never be enough and there isn't sufficient opportunities to fulfill your artistic aspirations. Now that may be true. There may be a supply and demand issue, and there is actually in the arts, but don't let that get into your mindset. It doesn't serve you. It won't open doors for you. And in fact, it will hinder you and it will make you anxious. So I'm going to share with you ways to flip that mindset. Amidst the shadows of scarcity, there's this beacon of hope that exists, a reminder that abundance is not merely this distant dream, this woo-woo word, but it's a tangible reality waiting to be embraced because it's a shift in your perspective and it's claiming your power and it's a declaration that your creative journey is not bound by limitations, not 
bound by other people giving you opportunities, but propelled by boundless potential because you are creative and the well of creativity within you is here for you to create, whether you're on someone else's project or your own. You are always a creative. So here are five tips to unlock your creative potential, to break free from scarcity in your mindset and to really flourish as an artist and as a creative entrepreneur in your artistry, in your creativity. And number one, yep, it's common. But does that mean we're doing it well? No, it's be thankful for what you have because Gratitude is a transformative force that opens the floodgates of abundance. Let me say that again. Gratitude will open doors for you. Take a moment each day to acknowledge all the blessings in your life, no matter how small, whether creative or not. Cultivate an attitude of gratitude and watch as opportunities multiply before your eyes. You will be amazed because when you carry this positive energy, it's very attractive to others around you. People want to collaborate with people like that. Doors open for you because you are open to the world and you are saying, I'm here and I'm thankful. And it really does translate. Think about people that you know that are positive and how wonderful it is to be around them and people that are always negative and how that drains your energy. So don't underestimate the power of cultivating thankfulness. This is somewhat a mistake, but also partly I understand this one because I've done it myself. But when we become a creative and we say, this is what I do, We often make that creativity have this pressure that you will provide my income, or at least that's our goal. And there's two different things. There's, you know, art for the enjoyment, for the fulfillment, for the gift that it is, and then money making. And we don't need to put more pressure on our creativity to produce money for us than, you know, what we see in our reality. Something dangerous happens when we put all this pressure on our creativity. We start approaching it with stress. It starts to make creating stressful. And having a lack of money really does contribute to the scarcity mindset that affects our creativity in a major way. So that we show up for an audition, we show up for a job interview, we show up for something desperate because we want that thing to rescue us. We want that thing to set us free. We want that thing to bring the money to fulfill the lack. When that thing is the very creative well and joy and beauty that's within you. Now, don't get me wrong. It's wonderful when creativity Um, does bring income. It's a wonderful gift, but relying on it and letting yourself fall into scarcity and desperation because of it. Don't use that same creativity within you to generate wealth. If you go back um, a couple episodes, I interviewed someone who pivoted their creativity and became a multimillionaire. Don't (laughs) underestimate what your creativity can do, but don't let yourself get a fixed mindset about how it will do it either. So again, relying only solely on your creativity for financial sustenance can breed fear and stress, stifling your creative flow. So diversify your income streams. If the money from creative work isn't flowing, alleviate that pressure and give your creativity other room to flourish and take the pressure off your poor creativity. (laughs) You hear me? I know you do. Okay, number three. Avoid black and white thinking about competitive opportunities. Now, let me break this down for you because it's a biggie. When you're faced with something competitive and a competitive creative endeavor, an opportunity where there's other people going for it as well. So when faced with these competitive endeavors, resist the urge to view them as a make or break moment. Understand that opportunities are plentiful and diverse and that missing out on this one does not diminish your worth and it doesn't diminish your potential. You've got to find this place within yourself to trust the unfolding of your creative journey and show up as your best creative self, knowing that the right opportunities will find their way to you. It's a beautiful thing to be able to land in this way of thinking that's like, what what is meant for me? 
will be mine. So create some sort of affirmation for yourself that you can actually surrender because the truth is you can't control and your anxiety is not going to help. And having a negative mindset is only going to work against your creative flow and the way you show up in the world. And on this point, number four, and I talk about this a lot as a life coach with people that identify as creative for their career or just anybody, but be kind to yourself and particularly watch that negative self-talk. Your thoughts have power shaping your reality, and that is the truth. Replace your self-doubt with empowering mantras, like I said, such as, what is meant for me will be mine, or you could say, I'm moving forward and creating a great artistic future. Treat yourself with compassion and kindness, nurturing a mindset of self-love, and within that, the big R word, (laughs) resilience. You must be kind to yourself, because beating up on yourself Shaming yourself is not going to help and it only adds to a scarcity mindset. And my last tip as a strategy to help you to overcome a scarcity, creative scarcity mindset, is embrace the journey. Embrace this adventure creatively, artistically. Remember that creativity is not a destination that you're trying to get to. It's a lifelong adventure. And I mean it when I say adventure, because creativity is this beautiful thing that we get to do with our lives. It's this wonderful force within us. Embrace the twists and turns, the highs and lows. Believe it or not, every experience that you're going through or have been through has the potential and the possibility to enrich your artistic tapestry, this beautiful place which you pull your ideas and inspiration from. Celebrate your progress, however small, and revel in the joy that it is to create, knowing that the path ahead is filled with infinite possibilities, whether you've experienced them yet or not, because scarcity will get you nowhere. So flip it and say, no, instead of scarcity and I don't know what's going on and I don't know what's next, you've got your finances sorted out over here and on the other side of that, you've got creativity within you and the adventure rather than the scarcity of your future. It's out there. You don't know what it's going to be. It's like a roller coaster. It's an adventure. Approach it with a playful, joyful attitude because in the end, getting to do this is a gift. Being creative is a gift. So seize the continuous journey that it is to be a creative entrepreneur, an artist, whatever it is. Your creative adventure, your life is nonstop. It keeps going perpetual, whether collaborating on other projects or pursuing your own creative endeavors, seize control of your own artistic destiny by actively propelling your career forward. Refuse to wait for elusive opportunities to come knocking. Instead, boldly forge your path and fashion your own opportunities. What that looks like for me? Okay, so during this last season, I could have fallen in a heap with a fixed mindset because I've said this before on this podcast, but we had the pandemic and I was in Melbourne, most lockdown city apparently in the entire world, and I was in lockdown for 150 days. I know a lot of people were. It was very, very strict. Everything that I had creatively went. I moved to America, had my first year, fantastic creative job, but I wasn't allowed to perform anymore. So as a creative myself, what I had known to that point, being a performer, I couldn't do because my visa stopped it, but I was able to educate others in an arts conservatory. And then there was the strike and the strike you know, finished. But after that, there was a real lack. But guess what? Rather than letting that crumble me, I was like, no, this is an opportunity to let my creativity pivot into something else because I have to create. It's who I am. And so I wrote a book. I dabbled in other creative ideas. I keep producing. I keep making. And it brings me so much joy. So seize control of your own artistic destiny. Refuse to wait for elusive opportunities to come knocking. 
boldly forge your path. There's ideas in you that you need to fashion into opportunities and be brave enough to do it. And the more you step, even those little steps forward in bravery, you get more brave. (laughs) I remember producing an event in London. You know, it's like I was working with West End performers and directors and all of that. I didn't get there overnight. I got there because the little steps before it gave me the courage. And that's how it works, friends. True fulfillment lies in the act of creation itself. Embrace this mindset. Empower yourself to cultivate success and happiness by bringing your visions to life everywhere you have an idea. Take little steps to see them come to pass. So in closing on this episode, welcome to the overflow. That's how I want to live my life. That's how I encourage you to live yours. Step into your creative destiny with confidence and with courage. Because after implementing these simple strategies, you'll embrace the abundance of creativity within you and attract new opportunities and experiences that will enrich your artistic adventure, your artistic journey. So let go of fear and embrace possibility. Drop that fear, pick up possibility and set off on your journey with courage and bravery, stepping out, knowing that those little steps will go somewhere, knowing that you walk in abundant creativity. Within you is abundance. You have a well of creativity that is never ending. And if you're feeling dry, go and do something new. Go try something different. If you can't write, get outside under a tree, (laughs) right there. Get into the space, the environment, mix things up. Allow yourself to be immersed because what a gift it is to offer our creativity to the world. So my friends, if you would like to have life coaching with me, if you're a creative or an artist or even somebody who's dabbling with the idea of doing something and you just feel stuck, and you would like to talk to me, go to larabiancapilcher.com. You can go to my coaching page and book a session with me. (laughs) I would love to work with you one-on-one. You can also get a group together and we can do group coaching. That's something I really enjoy and do a lot of. And my friends, I just want to encourage you and thank you for being here. And if this podcast, you're still listening, is a blessing in your life, could you jump onto Apple Podcasts or if you're on Spotify, fine, go there too. They all have places you can hit reviews and I would love you to leave a five-star review. You don't even have to leave a comment, so it's nice when you do. And I thank you so much with you on the journey, friends. And until next time. Phew, today's masterclass is done. I love reaching back and saying I've done this and helping you learn the easy way. If you want more, head to larabiancapilcher.com for show notes, links, freebies, my blog, coaching and courses. And you can also head to my socials, larabiancapilcher on Instagram and Facebook. I'm also on Twitter and Pinterest. Thanks again for listening. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That would mean the world to me. And of course, keep on living the healthy, wealthy, wise artist living towards your dream life. Bye, friends. P.S. Shout out to my hottie hubby, Andrew Pilcher, who does all the editing on this podcast. <laughs>